Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Karim Youssef. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Computer Science at Virginia Tech. And I work with the Synergy Research Group under supervision of Dr. Wu Feng. And today I'll be presenting Sparkle Blast, Scalable Parallelization of Blast Sequence Alignment Using Spark. So more than a year ago, when the very first few cases of COVID-19 appeared, scientists and doctors were not yet understanding what was going on. One systematic approach of understanding the properties of a newly discovered microorganism, such as a virus, is through genome sequencing. Genome sequencing consists of obtaining a sample that contains the microorganism, then feeding it to a sequencer, which decodes the DNA structure of the microorganism and outputs a sequence file. The sequence file is then used to search for similarity against a genome database containing previously sequenced genomes. This process is called sequence alignment. The most similar genome to the newly discovered microorganism defines its functional properties. For example, COVID-19 was mostly similar to the SARS coronavirus that appeared more than 10 years ago. This information helped scientists and doctors to understand the properties of the new virus and act accordingly. Genome sequencing technology has evolved significantly in the past two decades, leading to an unprecedented rate of sequencing for multiple organisms. On one hand, this opened the opportunity for a groundbreaking research in genomics. On the other hand, it led to an exponential growth in the size of genome databases, causing a bottleneck to genome analysis algorithms. For example, sequence alignment running against a very large database on a single computer could take up to a month. For this reason, computer science researchers have long focused on designing parallel and distributed sequence alignment tools to overcome this bottleneck. In this paper, we focus on BLAST. BLAST, short for Basic Local Alignment Search Tools, is the most widely used sequence alignment algorithm that is developed and maintained by the National Center for Biotechnology Information, or NCBI. Existing solutions attempt to optimize multiple design parameters, including scalability with database size, upgradability, which denotes the programming effort required to upgrade an existing parallel BLAST tool to work with new releases of NCBI BLAST code, and fault tolerance, which is the efficient rescheduling of failed tasks on a large scale distributed system. To the best of our knowledge, existing solutions has attempted to optimize one or more of these design parameters, but not the three of them. Sparkle Blast, our solution, optimizes the three parameters by implementing database partitioning for scalability, a Spark wrapper around unchanged NCBI Blast codes for upgradability, and using Spark fault tolerance. Sparkle Blast outperforms two state-of-the-art parallel and distributed BLAST tools. MPI BLAST, the most scalable parallel BLAST tool to date, which implements query plus database partitioning with dynamic scheduling for scalability, but lacks upgradability and fault tolerance. And Spark BLAST, one of the most recently developed tools that is highly upgradable by building a Spark wrapper around NCBI BLAST code and also fault tolerant, but not scalable with databases that do not fit in a single node's memory. Sparkle Blast outperforms MPI Blast and Spark Blast for scalability, for scalability up to a thousand cores. For the rest of this presentation, I'll be covering background about Blast in sequence alignment, parallel and distributed Blast design trade-offs, and then I'll describe the design and implementation of Sparkle Blast. After that, I'll explain the experiments and results that we used to evaluate our design, and then I'll conclude with future research directions. So, sequence alignment algorithms are algorithms for finding similarity between genome sequences. A sequence alignment algorithm attempts to find region of similarity by finding possible alignments of two genome sequences that result in the maximum matching of characters of the two sequences. A character in a genome sequence is called a base pair. Similarity between two genome sequences indicate functional relationship between genomes, such as the relationship between COVID-19 and the SARS coronavirus. 
BLAST is the most widely used sequence alignment tool, and it uses an approximate matching me method called seed and extend. It first attempts to find regions of exact similarity and small size between the two pair of sequences. And then it extends the seeds to the left and to the right, adding positive values to a score for matches and negative values for mismatches. The input to a BLAST algorithm consists of a query file and a genome database. The query file consists of genome sequences, usually belonging to the same genome. A genome database also consists of genome sequences, but is usually much larger than the query file and contains sequences from multiple genomes. For every pair of sequences in the query and the database, BLAST proceeds as follows. It starts by finding seeds, which are regions of fixed length and exact similarity. For each seed, it extends it to the left and to the right, adding negative score for mismatches and positive score for matches. The extension stops when it hits the boundaries of a sequence, the boundary of another seed, or when the score drops below a certain threshold due to a series of mismatches. In this toy example, if two mismatches are enough to drop the score below the threshold, then the alignment stops and, and proceeds to the next seed. This is repeated for all seeds. The highest scoring alignments from this stage are then selected for further extension using gaps. A gapped alignment consists of attempting to insert gaps at different positions of both sequences to find better alignments. For example, inserting a gap here would enable us to do further extension and find another match. The reason is that the scoring penalty for a mismatch between a character and a gap is less than the scoring penalty for a mismatch between two characters. The gapped extension phase includes in inserting gaps at different permutations of both characters, and it's solved using dynamic programming. Accordingly, the upper bound time complexity for BLAST is order of Q by D, where Q is the total number of characters in the query, and D is the total number of characters in the database. While BLAST implements approximate matching that reduces the execution time compared to exact alignment algorithms, it is still bottlenecked by the exponentially growing database sizes, which motivates the need for parallel and distributed BLAST. Before proceeding further, let's take a look at the output of the BLAST algorithm. The output for every query sequence consists of the high, highest scoring segment pairs from the database, along with the alignment score and a statistical significance of the alignment. A highest scoring segment pair is a match between a query sequence and a database sequence. And the output consists of a list that, is, that contains all these segment pairs from the entire database sorted by score and e-value. That takes us to the next step. The parallel and distributed BLAST design trade-offs. The, the first question is how to parallelize. One approach could be partitioning the query file across the compute nodes and replicating the database to every node. This approach has the advantage of being embarrassingly parallel since the computations of every query are independent of computations of other queries and no communication is needed between the compute nodes. However, it causes load imbalance because query sequences are of unequal length and also because the computations on every node depend on the matches between the query and the database that, that are not equal for every node. More importantly, query partitioning suffers from a significant I.O. overhead for databases that do not fit in memory, which makes it not scale with the growing size of databases. Alternatively, we could partition the database and fit every database partition in the memory of a compute node if we have enough resources. This will require us to replicate the query file to each node. This, appro this, this approach significantly improves performance compared to query partitioning due to reducing I.O. overhead for databases that do not fit in memory. However, it requires communication at the end to group and sort the results of every query by score and e-value. 
Previous research showed that database partitioning is bottlenecked by communication overhead and centralized auto processing. For this reason, the MPI BLAST tool uses query plus database partitioning to optimize communication, I.O., and computations. MPI BLAST implements hierarchical partitioning by having a supermaster node that partitions the queries dynamically to groups or subclusters consisting each of a master and a group of workers. For example, the supermaster partitions the query to these groups and each group has a replica of the database that is partitioned across workers inside the group. This design allows MPI BLAST to optimize communication, computations, and I.O. However, since we look to use Spark to optimize other design parameters, such as upgradability and fault tolerance, this hierarchical partitioning would incur extra scheduling overhead because previous research has shown that Spark is bottlenecked by its scheduler. For this reason, in Spark Blast, we selected to use database partitioning and parallel output processing which takes us to the next point, which is the design and implementation of Sparkle Blast. As mentioned earlier, Sparkle Blast design goals consist of achieving scalability with the ever-growing database sizes, upgradability with the ever-evolving NCDI Blast codes, and full tolerance. Scalability is achieved through database partitioning to optimize I.O. and load balance. Upgradability is achieved by implementing a Spark wrapper around NCDI Blast code without changing it which enables us to switch between NCBI Blast versions without programming effort. And fault tolerance is achieved by leveraging Spark's fault tolerance, which efficiently rescheduled failed tasks on a large scale distributed system. To solve the bottlenecks of database partitioning that was shown by previous research, which are centralized output processing and communication overhead, we implemented parallel output processing. Parallel output processing consists of grouping the results of every query and then sorting them in parallel, an operation that Spark has shown to scale well with. Our experiment showed that Sparkful Blast scaled up to, scales up to 1,000 cores in 32 nodes, and our empirical model estimated that Sparkful Blast could scale up to more than 8,000 cores. The implementation of Sparkful Blast consists of partitioning the database across compute nodes and further, partition and, and further partition the database across the cores of each node. The query file is replicated to each node, and every core invokes NCBI BLAST as an external process on its database partition and the query file. This multiprocess design was selected to be comparable with MPI BLAST that wrapped a version of NCBI BLAST that was not yet multi-threaded. However, Sparkle Blast supports running multi-threaded Blast by invoking NCBI Blast by a single pass per node and enabling it to utilize the cores, the rest of the cores on each node. This enables Sparkle Blast to work with recent version of NCBI Blast that are multi-threaded and optimized for parallelism on a single node. The next step is the parallel output processing. This represents the output per each node. We can see that the output of each query sequence is distributed across the nodes. So using Spark operations, we group the results of every query and then sort them in parallel. While this operation is scalable because it performs parallel sorting, it requires a shuffle operation, which is communication expensive in Spark. However, on the modern HPC cluster with high bandwidth network, the shuffle overhead was insignificant up to a thousand cores according to our experiments. This takes us to the experimental setup and the results. We, we ran an experiment for a sequence search where the query is a metal a metal resisting bacteria named Geobacter metallorecusins consisting of 309,052 sequences and around 38 megabytes. The search was conducting against the non-redundant protein database consisting of around 170k sequences and 130 gigabytes. We ran the experiment on two computing platforms in Virginia Tech at Virginia Tech's Advanced Research Computing Center, Blue Ridge and Cascades. Blue Ridge consists of Intel Cinderbridge, Intel Cinderbridge CPU nodes 
having 16 cores per node and 64 gigabytes connected to a Lustre distributed file system. Five cascades consist of Intel Broadwell CPU nodes containing, six, containing 32 cores per node and 128 gigabytes of memory and connected to a GPFS distributed file system. Our results showed that Sparkle Blast outperformed Spark Blast and MPI Blast for up to a thousand cores on both systems. Spark Blast was mainly bottlenecked by the I.O. overhead caused by database not fitting in memory, which triggers paging to the distributed file system, causing both I.O. latency as well as network bandwidth contention due to transferring data across the network from the distributed file system to the nodes. Sparkle Blast also significantly outperformed MPI Blast for 128 and 256 cores. This was mainly due to load balance as we're going to show in the next slide. Starting from 512 cores, the performance of Sparkle Blast and MPI Blast was comparable. At a southern core, they were performing almost similarly with a slight advantage for Sparkle Blast. While the performance is comparable at the southern cores between Sparkle Blast and MPI Blast, Sparkle Blast has the advantage of optimizing the two other design parameters of upgradability and fault tolerance. To measure load imbalance, we used, a met we used a metric called imbalance percentage that was initially introduced by Cray. The imbalance percentage measured the percentage of load imbalance between parallel workers for an application. The lower the imbalance percentage, the better the load balance for the application. Spark Blast suffered the highest imbalance percentage that increased with the number of cores. While Sparkle Blast and MPI Blast incurred a small imbalance percentage of less than 20% for southern cores. And for smaller number of cores, Sparkle Blast was more load balanced. To estimate the scalability of Sparkle Blast on larger systems, we extrapolated the performance of Sparkle Blast for up to 32 southern cores. Using actual performance results collected for up to a thousand cores, we use a time pro we use an execution time profiler to measure communication time and computation time. We then extrapolated both computation and communication overhead for up to 32 thousand cores. This chart with log scaled excesses shows that Sparkle Blast is estimated to scale for up to eight for up to more than eight thousand cores before starting to be slowed down by communication overhead. <clears throat> While MPI Blast was shown to scale to 32 southern cores, Sparkle Blast achieves the two, the two other design parameters of upgradability and fault tolerance. Future directions for this research include evaluating the scalability of the actual scalability of Sparkle Blast on a larger HPC system. Also, it includes optimizing communication overhead for larger scale. One method for doing that could be using Spark with different communication protocols, such as Spark plus RDMA, which is a distribution of Spark that is open sourced and could be used to replace Spark in Sparkle Blast. We also look to optimize IO overhead for query partitioning by optimizing paging overhead to leverage the embarrassingly parallel structure of query partitioning with optimized IO. And finally, we look to apply Sparkle Blast to a study for understanding COVID-19 genome diversity. A genome diversity analysis pipeline consists of multiple steps, including sequence alignment, which represents a bottleneck to the, scal to the scalability of such pipeline. To conclude, Sparkle Blast optimizes three important design parameters for parallel and distributed sequence alignment tools. It's scalable with database size, by implementing database partitioning to fit the database in memory of a computing cluster. It's upgradable as it wraps a Spark wrapper around NCBI Blast code without changing it, which incurs no programming effort to switch between versions of NCBI Blast and upgrading it to the latest version. It also leverages Spark for full tolerance, and to the best of our knowledge, it's the only parallel Blast tool that optimizes these three design parameters. Sparkle Blast outperforms MPI Blast and Spark Blast, two state-of-the-art parallel Blast tools for up to thousand cores. With this, we reached the end of our talk. Thank you for listening.
For questions, please contact the authors at these emails. Thank you.